Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Doug sent me a story, and there's a little note in the middle. I gotta stop and point out one of the most annoying things that people do when you've caught them. When you've caught somebody who has tried to rip you off. We'll talk about that in a second, but a story out of Ohio, I believe. New Galleon bike path built on private property without permission from the Mansfield News Journal. It was nearly a year ago that David Keller drove by his family's land south of Galleon and discovered a stack of logs in the field. Who's cutting my trees? The man had exclaimed to himself. He recalled during the city council March 14th meeting. He soon discovered the answer, the city or their contractors. Project was a half-mile extension of Galleon's Levant Dawson Trail built through Keller's land to connect the existing bike path to Biddle Road. Keller had not approved the work, though, and he claims he has yet to receive any compensation from the city. A video feed from the meeting that was posted on Galleon's Facebook page contains him asking for some sort of resolution. The recording also includes pushback from the mayor, Tom O'Leary, who said he was surprised that Keller took the matter to the city council. There are other ways to handle it, he told the man. It really just strikes me as just way out of character for you to come here and make a big deal out of it. So the guy's family owns land, <clears throat> and the city just ran a bike path across it without asking him. So he goes to the city council to complain, and the mayor says, I'm surprised at you for coming here and complaining like this. This is so out of character. And they're trying to make him feel bad for being upset. They stole his property. Oh, but that's out of character. You shouldn't be acting like that. Shame on you. And they try to blame him for being upset when they're the ones who took his property. The Levant Dawson Trail has been on the city's project list for nearly a decade, according to news release city officials prepared back in 21. The announcement then was for the opening of the project's first phase, which was an eight-tenths of a mile path stretching along the river from Harding Way West to the wastewater treatment plant off Hosford Road. The first phase was built on 12 and a half acres of land that the Levin family had donated to the city. After making three unsuccessful grant requests to state agencies, a project request was made to the uh, Egbert Fries Foundation, the news release read, the annual endowment funds, park and recreation projects within the city, and it contributed $280,000 to the construction of the trail. The city announced on summer 21 its intent to begin a second phase of the project. The second path would intersect with the first trail just north of the wastewater plant, then run half a mile west toward Biddle Road. During the March 14th council meeting, Keller explained that O'Leary had approached him about the project a couple years ago. Keller is the trustee of a family trust that owns several parcels of land across the south side of Galleon. According to records from Crawford County, uh, one of these properties is a 50-acre plat between the city's wastewater treatment plant and Biddle Road. The trustee said the mayor wanted to acquire a narrow strip of the family's land a half mile long, and so the man says, I propose we do a swap. So he allowed the city to survey the land, and they discovered that the narrow trail would still take up about one and a half acres of that land. In exchange for the strip, Keller said he told them that he wanted one and a half acres from the city added to the east end of his family's property. So just trade me one and a half acres for one and a half acres. He said, we never got a proposed agreement, never got anything in writing. The man claimed that O'Leary told him the city was considering shortening the bike path's second phase to keep it on land already owned by the city, ending it on the roundabout at the end of Glade Avenue, rather than going all the way to Biddle Road. Keller told council members that no progress was made on the project for several months. Then sometime in the spring of 2022, the Ashland County resident visited the family's real estate, and he drove down Biddle Road, and I look at my field. There's a pile of logs. That's how he learned that the city was moving forward with a bike path. A strip of his forest was gone. Piles of his dirt had been pushed across Biddle Road. No one ever, by any method, email, telephone, you name it, told me that was happening or asked, obviously, for permission. We did not consent to any of that, and yet it happened. Now he alleges city administrators are ignoring his calls. It's been a year. 
and the family is nearly to the point where they want to cancel any potential deals with the city, so the bike path is removed and their dirt and trees are restored. This is just beyond aggravating, he said. Who would do something like that to somebody? Just take over their property. The city doesn't do something soon, the man said. He will take the matters in his own hands. He says, it's a liability issue. I own the property. I'm going to have to shut it down, and I hate to do that. The city, the people, deserve better. And what he's pointing out is if somebody's on that bike path and they get hurt, when they find out it's owned by a guy who owns a bunch of land, they're going to go, wait, let's sue that guy too. Sure, why not? So meanwhile, the mayor told the man that he was surprised that he'd visited council members, a group who has no control over this, to make such a public point out of it. It strikes me as out of character. So he's saying, the mayor is saying, that this man is acting out of character by being upset that someone stole the land that belongs to him and his family. The mayor said he'd like the man to make a proposal and that the city would either transact the city property or make an offer based on the value of the land. No timeline or resolution was set before the council moved on to further business. And I think the mayor is being disingenuous because I think if the city does something, the council's probably got to approve it, right? So it makes sense that that's who you'd complain to. But you need to remember... That we talked all about, you know, uh, adverse possession and people squatting on property and so on and so forth. This is simply, as explained here, the matter of the city just taking something from somebody without even attempting to address it. And could they do that, like, say, by eminent domain and say, like, we have a higher purpose to, w- to which we can put this, therefore we're going to put a bike path on it. Theoretically, they could, but at the very least, they've got to compensate them. The question is, what are they compensating for that? The fact that they took it without even addressing compensation is crazy. And just so you know, many states have laws that say if you go onto somebody's property and chop down their trees without their permission, um, that's a form of theft. Uh, and even though it's timber, uh, it's a fairly common thing that people do steal trees. And so Michigan has a law on the books that says that if you chop down someone else's trees and take them, not only do you owe the person for the full value of those trees, but you owe them three times the value, treble damages, treble damages for their trees. So this, of course, is not happening in Michigan, so I understand that. But a lot of states have got statutes on that, the idea that you take something from somebody and you get caught. Uh, you got to pay them compensation. And so here, it's not necessarily just compensating them for that strip of land. Because what are they going to say? Well, you know, we'll sell you the land after we take the timber off of it. I don't know what kind of trees they were. But the point is that if I own the land and I own the trees on the land, you don't have the right to come in there and take the land or chop down the trees. And I know it sounds like a real quibbling distinction, but it's actually a real one. And so that is a very weird thing that the city was talking to the guy about possibly working something out, and they stopped talking to him, and then just took it. So then when he goes and complains to the city council, the mayor's like, that's so unlike you. I can't believe you're complaining about that. Really? I can't believe you took the guy's property without asking him. That's the crazy part. So it's a bizarre story. We'll see what happens. Obviously, the guy's got a slam dunk uh, on going to court and suing them for the taking. That's, that's an easy one. Uh, more interesting would be what would happen if you went out there and blockaded the path because it's on his property and they have no permission to put it there. He could theoretically go out and tear up that path or block it. It's on his property. And so to stop him from doing that, they'd have to buy the property. And I don't think you could just run to court and say, well, we stole his property, but we want to stop him from blocking people from crossing his property because we put a bike path there. Um, I don't think that would fly. I don't think so. So, crazy story. Zach Tuggle wrote that for the Mansfield News Journal. Doug sent it. Thanks a lot. New galleon bike path built on private property without permission. We'll see what happens. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Life is too important to be taken seriously.